So most of you probably don't realize that my, my humble little machine shop here was originally put together by me in the mid 80s as, a, as an operating machine shop. You know, I actually took outside jobs and uh, you know, helped pay, help pay for the machines and uh, make a little extra money on the side. Um, I bought all these machines new, took loans out on them and, and worked them to pay, pay for themselves. Uh, the way I think was, it cost almost as much as my first house and it, it paid for itself, uh, I think it was five years, it took out a five year note on it. So uh, it continues to be an operating shop to this day. Most of the work I do out here is for, is for a company I'm cur currently employed at. I, I do uh, mechanical design for them and I prototype a lot of the parts or most of the parts that I design here. So that's, that's you know, where, where I spend most of my time is, is working for somebody else. Uh, hopefully that will change soon and I can spend more time out here making projects for myself but uh, for now you know it's it's still it's still making me money um, so anyway that's why it's so dirty now usually it's all cleaned up but I was I was using it pretty heavy yesterday so in doing so I thought I would share a little technique that I, I used to uh, rough out machine parts where there's a lot of metal to be removed I was making some fairly large parts yesterday that required a lot of the material to be removed and I thought I'd uh, use them, use one of those as an example to uh, demonstrate uh, a technique I use for removing a lot of metal fast. So let me let me show you. So here's the part I was working on. It's uh, it's just an assembly fixture for a product we make, and it's uh, it's made out of a two-inch thick piece of cast jig plate, which is pretty gummy stuff to machine. And as you can see, there's a, a lot of metal that, that needed to be removed out of it. Um, normally, you know, if I had a larger bandsaw, I would saw this out, okay, as much as I could anyway. But uh, my, my bandsaw is a little on the white side for a cut that big, and I was afraid of the blade wandering inside the block and scrapping it out. So I decided just to machine it out. Um, but anyways, there's a... Uh, well, I got, I got most of the the big stuff milled out now I'm just putting this pocket in the back and, and it dawned on me there's a uh, machining a milling technique that I, I'd like to share with you guys that saves a lot of time when you're removing a lot of metal it's called plunge milling so first of all um, if you wanted to mill a pocket like this or a frame in this case it's not a pocket because it's all the way through um, you, you think you would just mill around the inside of the of the frame with the cutter offset by its diameter right well, you can do that, but like I said, this is cast jig plate. It's real gummy stuff, and when your the depth of your cut gets approaches the diameter of the end mill, it's hard to clear the chips unless you use what's called a high helix end mill. All right, turn that noisemaker off. So anyway, um, as I was saying, when you start milling slots as deep as they are wide, it gets hard to clear the chips. And I'll show you how that works here. You just, just mill like a normal end on a side mill. You'll see these chips start to accumulate behind the cutter. And you're generating a lot of heat. Eventually those will start loading up. So a better way to do something like this is called plunge milling. All you do is just move over like a third the diameter of the cutter and punch through like so. When you do this, it doesn't give those chip chips a chance to accumulate. And you, you won't run the risk of breaking your end mill. Eventually, if you side mill, it, just, the cutter will heat up to the point where the chips will start sticking to the foods and uh, the end mill will break if you're not paying attention. But this way you can, you know, the cutter stays nice and cool and you can just go forever. It works out to about the same rate of mill removal as you would side mill, and maybe even a little faster. Um, one thing you do have to remember is you want to climb mill you know, around the inside of the frame. You see, I'm, I'm moving in that direction, and the rotation of the cutter is forcing the cutter away from my finish line. If I were going the other way, 
the rotation of the cutter would tend to pull the end of the line and you run the risk of, of cutting too deep. So you want to climb mill around the inside of the pocket on your, on your plunge cutter. Just like that, okay? Once you, get, once you get it roughed out like that, then you can go around the inside and finish it up. I usually, get, I usually like to take one rough and cut around, around the inside first. gets rid of all the, the roughness from the plunge cutting. And then you can go back and take five or ten thousandths off the finish pass. A little slow and feed rate. If you've ever machined cast jig plate before, it's kind of kind of measurable stuff to machine. It's it's real open it has no uh, porous surface, so it's, and it's gummy. Like I said, it sticks to the end real, real easily. So you have to be a little bit careful when you're machining, especially when you're pushing, you know, taking a lot of metal off. So when you start generating heat, you know, then you run the risk of the chip sticking. And another thing, you can keep some cooling on. I usually keep a spray bottle of coolant. Sometimes it actually works. And that helps too. That's all there is to it. That's that's plunge milling, plunge cutting. This works real well for uh, for long end mills too. If you try and side mill with a long end mill, you'll break them every time. What you got to do is climb around the inside of the pocket. If you're, if you're milling a pocket with a deep with a long end mill, a deep pocket, you climb mill around the inside of the pocket, plunge cutting your way around. You don't try and side mill it until you get get it all roughed out. You only a little bit left, a little bit of material left to remove. So that's all, that's all I have today. We'll see you next time.